a podcast on the people behind CelticUnderground.net. If, like me, the length of your commute is from the bedroom to the dining room, uh, then you probably get thousands of podcasts to catch up on. But I'm sure you want to listen to a breakdown of the incredible set of circumstances which are arising in Scottish football. I use the Titanic analogy a lot. We are heading for the iceberg. It's actually hit and people are debating uh, nonsense. Anyway, enough of me. This is David Lowe and Anthony Murray with me, Harry Brady. Uh, there's only one topic okay. of conversation in Scottish football, and that is uh, the long-awaited dossier um, of Rangers. I actually said on Twitter today, I wonder if they're a bit like these people who appear on Jeremy Kyle, that you're, you're, you're wondering why are you making a fool of yourself and then you think it's just because you want a bit of, of fame and celebrity. Um, and certainly they had the whole of Scottish football waiting. So I'm joined by Anthony Murray and, and David Lowe to uh, to discuss the dossier. How are you guys doing? Very well. Having an interesting day. <laughs> Still not finished, but there you go. Anthony, how are you doing? How's Bratislava? Uh, glorious blue sky today. And uh, we've, we've got... Uh, not that I mean every day's a day off, but tomorrow's victory over fascism day, which is one of the funniest public holidays in the world because Slovakia invited the fascists in, so they invited them in. Then the Russians chased them out, and then they gave themselves a public holiday for that. I'm not complaining. On well, any other year, I'd get a day off. We've got VE Day tomorrow, so it's a public holiday in, in the UK tomorrow on a Friday. All right. Yeah, is that always a public holiday? No, no, they've just moved it for jingoism reasons. Um, and talking of jingoism, uh, the the Rangers uh, dossier. So I got it. Don't know when everybody else got it. I got it about eleven o'clock this morning. David, when did you get it? Okay, roughly that time. I I didn't look at my watch and I read, but I did read it at lunchtime quickly, and then I read it again when I, uh, I uh, after my tea this evening. So and then I've been listening to. Uh, uh, I almost said good friend. I don't know if he's still a good friend or he will be after I finish the, the podcast. But I was listening to Stuart Robertson on clips on the radio. Poor Stuart. What a horrible position to be in. Do you know, <laughs> I uh, I had a text conversation with someone. Uh, I've got, I've got to be careful how I word this. Someone who knows Stuart Robertson this morning. Yeah. And, and uh, they just said to me, I think he's going to be made to look like a tool for a few days. <laughs> Yeah. Well, good Glasgow phrase. Yeah, it's uh, crazy. I, I just find the whole situation crazy. Crazy with the, 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 the virus and crazy with Rangers' attitude in the midst of the virus. So uh, what they're trying to do has to be put in context, and that context is horrible. It's basically a, uh, an Armageddon situation for European football with Scottish football. While probably the most exposed because it's, it's, it relies the most amongst their larger leagues on on attendances, so I just don't think you should be messing about with dossiers and uh, allegations and silly stuff uh, in in the current environment. Basically, my, my analogy that I used to somebody, to, a, a journalist that I had text uh. conversation with today, was the SPFL might not have been very good at what or um, very done it in a profession in as professional a manner as they should have done for trying to mm. bring things to an end. But it's a bit like um the staff in the Titanic have just spotted the iceberg and they're running around as quickly as possible. Meanwhile Rangers are sitting there demanding that the the uh, conductor of the orchestra get get fired uh, because it because it's out of tune, you know? Yeah, I mean it's a fair analogy, you know, because it's true. Uh, and I, I don't know what age everybody is on, on this call, but uh, certainly in my lifetime, this is the greatest crisis, you know, facing European football, British football, Scottish football, uh, and it's going to get worse. And it really is just not not very good to be messing about uh, talking about deck chairs and icebergs, you know, <laughs> uh, against that backdrop. It's just. So I'll get it's not right. I'll get on to um, Stuart Robertson's appearance on Clyde because somebody very fortunately has sent me a summary of Stuart Robertson on Clyde, and I'm even more perplexed uh, listening to Stuart Robertson on Clyde than I than I was before 
uh, I got the text. Um, so I'm going to wind back a bit. Anthony, did you hear Neil Doncaster on Radio Scotland? Or have you heard the Radio Scotland podcast? Yes, I heard him at the weekend when he was good, I thought. I thought he went up and put up a, a good front for I mean, like, I'm not an expert, you know, in these, uh, you know, the technicalities and the legalities of these situations. But I thought Doncaster was good the other day. And when I was reading the, the dossier today... Uh, you know the cash, the cash for resolutions votes complaint. You know there was the, obviously the bullet point complaints, yeah, and the one about the the cash for votes. I thought he answered that then, didn't he? Well, uh, the reason I'm asking that is because obviously anybody who's been paying attention to me on Twitter will know that I've been having a real go at you and Murray and Tom English because personally I think they've been making complete asses of themselves over this, um, because. The thing that really got me on, on Radio Scotland was they kept asking Neil Doncaster about advances and Neil Doncaster said, well, we actually already give out advances. Um, advances go out through the course of the season. In fact, technically the money belongs to the clubs. They loan it back to the SPFL uh, is how they do it. And then we give them it back based on their league placing and, uh, and we give advances out and we're pretty much maxed out to the advances. Um, in, for example, in the, in the bottom three tiers, um, people have already, when, when we called the leagues, the bottom teams didn't get anything because what we do is we allocate based to up to the limit of what the bottom place team gets and then from there. And then they just kept asking, but what about advances? And, and I'm shouting at the radio saying, but you've already answered this. He's already yeah. answered it. And so... I, I then, I'm, I was never really sure what, for example, Tom English was wanting an inquiry about. Rangers have said they want an inquiry. I was never sure what Tom English is wanting that about. And now, David, I don't, mm. even, I'm, I don't really know what Rangers want an inquiry about. Well, that I only saw a clip. You were talking about clips there. I saw or listen to, rather, a Radio Clyde clip. And the guy, and I don't listen to Radio Clyde, so I don't know his name, but the guy that was asking the questions asked Stuart Robertson, what's it all about? What do you want? What do you want here? Because I don't know what he wanted, and I was really interesting, really interested to hear what he was going to say. And he said, this is Stuart, you can listen to it yourself. It's about governance. We want to see better governance in Scottish football. They want to see a higher standard. Now, coming from Rangers with all the acknowledged problems that they've had and continue to have, and I'm talking about governance problems and financial problems, that's just not good enough. Rangers are in no position to be lecturing or hectoring or bullying, dare I say, anyone on uh, these matters, financial or governance matters. They should first of all get their own house in order. That is not a valid excuse for doing what they're doing. It's just not acceptable, and I don't believe it. I believe they've taken the stance they, they have for two reasons, being an old cynic. Number one, it's to impress their own constituency, to look good in front of their own, own fans. And number two, to try and avoid uh, awarding uh, Celtic being awarded the League Championship trophy. That's what's motivating them here. And what, at the end of the day, what's happened is... They have lost the vote they wanted. 81% of the eligible votes voted this resolution through in a very clumsy manner. If the truth be told, a very clumsy manner. That's the extent of it. Clumsiness. It's not bad governance. It's not Machiavellian chicanery. It's clumsiness. With a degree of panic factored into the situation, this is a horrid time. The whole frigging ship's gone down. You know, nobody is sacrosanct. Football clubs are operating in a nil revenue environment with multi-year financial overheads and obligations. It's horrendous. And as, as, as we speak, there is no obvious way out of it. I think that's the backdrop. I think that's the landscape we're dealing with. And it's got sod all to do with governance. It's just Rangers trying to, uh, uh, and a gang of one, quite frankly, because where are hearts and where are strings are, this is this report come out, or dossier, I beg your pardon. Uh, nowhere to be seen. So that's the long and short of it as far as I'm concerned. 
serious speech over. <laughs> so, uh, Anthony, what do you think? Because if we start from the beginning, this all kicked off because the SPFL were wanting to bring to a head the league campaigns of the three bottom tiers of Scottish football and hand out the cash. And Rangers kicked up a fuss about that and so did Hearts because Hearts don't want to get relegated. That's when this started. So what I, do you think Rangers have wanted out of this, Anthony? I, it, I mean, it's obviously, it's, it's petty, it's pathetic, it's lousy, but it is that. It's, they just want to deny Celtic a title that they could not and would not and were never going to get from us on the park. Uh, even though we handed them some points, you know, we, we gave them their chance. And we still managed to rack up a, a 13 point lead. I thought one of the interesting things is in the dossiers, it's one of the kind of snidey little smarmy points that they make is oh, well, why aren't why are you continuing the Scottish Cup but not continuing the league? As if that's illogical. When in reality, well, because the league's over, guys. Do you know what I mean? I, I mean, I know it's not, and Celtic don't want the title for no reason. We want to play the games, we want to get the points, we want to celebrate it. We've all been through that. But their failure to grasp that difference that the league was over for all intents and purposes and the Scottish Cup is still fair game for all the, f- the four teams that are still in it. You know, the, the lack of yeah. rational thought there is absolutely absurd to me. Yeah, I mean, I, I, Yes, it is irrational, but at the same time it's actually rational because it's, it's to appeal to their own constituency and it's to avoid Celtic getting uh, uh, awarded the title. But uh, it's a vote. It's a vote that they lost. And any vote, and I, I've had a career in, in trying to win votes uh, in, in the corporate world. It's dirty. Politics is dirty. The business world is dirty. And Scottish football, British football is dirty. And what you do is hector for votes, pester for votes. Uh, the board makes recommendations to shareholders, clubs for votes. And you follow that up with calls. It's what you do. It comes with the territory. You try. Board makes boards make recommendations to the members and follow up to try and ensure that what the board wants, having taken advice, is achieved. That's what you do, and that's what happened here. Now, the fact of the matter is, a small cabal, or if you want to use corporate language, concert party again, of which Rangers are more than familiar, a try to frustrate the will of the majority. And that cabal consisted of Inverness, party official of Dundee, uh, and Rangers having been outnumbered with the 75% threshold in the in the premier, premiership. And they thought it was in the bag. Uh, and they thought they had uh, what they wanted. But this, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, Dundee quirk, you know, the, the, lost, the, the, the lost email or the whatever, you know, uh, happened. And uh, maybe we should have a little inquiry into that when time permits, if the league and all the teams in it are still around, <laughs> but not just now. So that, that's, the, that's the nub of all this, a vote, you know, which uh, went the way uh, that Rangers and a few others didn't want. And and that's the thing, Anthony, that I don't, <coughs> I don't really grasp what, what it is that they're, they're looking for, because... They lost the vote. Is it is it now doing the shotgun approach? Is is that what this dossier is? If we just chuck enough shit at the wall, some something might stick. Is that what it is? I think there. I mean, there's always the rumours, the suggestions that they are, they're a sinking ship. You know, they're drowning, and you're just looking up. I was I was looking at some of their online content. You know, their fan media, just to see you know what they're saying about this. You know, is one of them going to step up to be slightly more intelligent than the rest and say, well, maybe this dossier is going to be not going to be as, you know, brilliant, you know, the torpedo that they were looking for. And But no, one by one, they line up to make themselves look stupider and stupider. And and then from this this media that I looked at, I've learned this thing, my jars that they've launched. Uh-huh. And it's this thing that reminds me, remember the Celtic family, I don't know if, if Celtic fans remember this. Is that and, a Terry, Terry Casty thing? It must have been. It was. It was. Yeah. It was pre-Fergus. Yeah. You know, we I we mean, were going yeah. down the toilet. 
we were yeah. swinging and missing, trying all kinds yeah. of nonsense ideas to rinse our fans of money. Of course, yeah. my dad signed up. Of course, he did. You know? <laughs> and we became members of the Celtic family. And that's what this my jers is. You know, it's it's just a, a, a crap idea Celtic had in the early nineties when we were swinging and you know drowning, and they've just pulled that out of the trash. And it's that shows how desperate they are right now. That they're, they're resorting to stupid ideas like that, which you know maybe it'll be a short term bump. You know maybe they'll get some money in the coffers, but ultimately it, I think it exposes the reality of their situation that they are really really panicking right now. So, so this is what I don't understand, right? I'm, I'm going to, and forgive me for if, if people are bored, this is what I got through as a summary of what Stuart Robertson said on Clyde, and then we're going to compare it with some of the stuff. Clubs not being told about potential sky liability is an issue for us and for the game. We as the SPFL directors were not given briefing papers, so... Uh, you need to ask the SPFL executive about potential liability. The rush to end the season wasn't necessary. You'll need to ask executives why. You need to look at governance of the SPFL. We, we've lost confidence in the SPFL. Implication of finishing the season were never disclosed to clubs. Produce the evidence. Uh, EGM will decide. Uh, where is it? Uh, in response to the SPFL saying there's no bullying we never said there was corruption or bullying by the SPFL. They do. They say in their, they say in their dossier. They literally tweeted it today. Yeah, we will not be I bullied. Mean, they actually tweeted it. Yeah, he's on Clyde saying they never said. Uh, why weren't we told about potential challenges and broadcasters around reconstruction? Um, uh, null and void isn't open to the... This is He said this. Null and void isn't open to the SPFL board. The board has the power to call, to call the season. The key things for me back in March should have been separate decision to call the league from giving money to smaller clubs. As weeks go by, it's becoming more difficult to finish on the pitch. Probably have to work to UEFA deadline of the 25th of May. Right, so this is what I don't get. He's accepting that null and void wasn't an option, yet they were voting against the proposal to call the league. And... Um, He's also accepting that the deadline pretty much is the 25th of May to tell you for what we're doing. So if the deadline's the 25th of May, null and void wasn't an option, I'm not quite sure what they're not happy about. Uh, it's, it's not clear at all what they're not happy about. I, I don't think there is anything to be unhappy about. I think it's a massive spoke screen to look good with their fans. They have played this card before. A couple of years ago, they played the, the what's his name, Marshall McLennan, Murdoch McLennan and the Gary Hughes card. Yep. Both were uh, closet or, or, or overt Celtic fans for no apparent reason. Uh, Gary Hughes left of his own accord because he didn't need the, the, the crap and obviously McLennan is still there. They've played this card before. It makes them look really good. Look at us, big, tough Rangers. You know, we're the... We're, we're the the mighty Rangers, nobody likes us, we don't care. And, you know, that's the constituency they're appealing to because in this whole regard, I do believe they're in a gang of one. And I don't think there's any logic. What you tried to do there is read out the the, 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 the fact that it's illogic what they're doing. And, and you're right, it's illogic. There's no logic to it. It's purely to appeal to their own fans, their own constituency. And here's another thing, you know, all that happened at the EGM it's a formula. The league, is, the Premiership is still not over as we sit here tonight. Yeah, it's still, it's still not over. There was no rush. What they agreed was a formula. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but the league is still not. The Championship still not Celtics. Uh, there, there, there's nothing logical about what they're doing, in my opinion. That's so, uh, <laughs> sure. The, the other thing. I, um, I mean, I'm a bit sort of speechless about the... He's admitting one thing. I mean, they actually say on the on the dossier, Section 3.5, threats made to member clubs. That, that's the, more, the most laughable thing in the whole... The whole I, keep for, I keep almost calling it report. Dossier, you know, bullying, threats. I mean, what are we dealing with? Primary six children here. Oh, it's, laughable. it's laughable. You what see, you do is you, you lobby. 
that's what you do. You lobby. You want the vote. You lobby. That's not that's not bullying or hectoring or or, or threatening. That's what you do. In Parliament, we've got three line whips. You know, it's what you do. It's a nonsense. It's embarrassing. I think the funniest line in it is the bit about the the pages. Like like fair do is they have to play the big guy and the hard man and all that. But I think for me, I mean, you know, again, I'm not a lawyer, but the the complaint that they only had 24 hours to read 118 pages, is that not just showing your hand that you're a moron? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know it's complex legal jargon, but do you not have your best guys on it? Do you not say, all right, yeah. we need to get this read. Let's do it, guys. Uh, also, bear, bear in mind, Anthony, their chief executive is an SPFL d- director who would have been involved in the discussions about pulling this document together because Les Gray of Hamilton, who's also an SPFL director, he's been on Radio Scotland and said the board was working on this and we they created a 100-odd page document. But then the board summarised it to, 20, to 14 pages to give to the member clubs. That's already yep. been talked about. Yep. And Stuart Robertson was part of all that. Is a very, very, very good point. And, and the outcome: this is the resolve of the SPFL board, of which Stuart Robertson's uh, a member of, uh, but now apparently in a gang of one dissenting from the collective will of the board. Uh, but this is the considered will of the board, having taken professional advice in the middle of a crisis to come up with a formula that settles leagues, uh, the four leagues that the SPFL are responsible for and to release funds uh, within the parameters of uh, its constitution. I I have difficulty finding anything wrong with any of this. Certain aspects were clumsily managed, so what? These things happen. I mean, so you you talk, David, about being in business, right? So if you own a business or run a business, Mm -hmm. if you're chief executive, Mm -hmm. and somebody phones you up, to try for, and you think they are bullying, would you not tell them to get to and say, <laughs> yeah. next time I see you, I'm going to kick you in the nuts? Yeah, I mean, th- 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 this is exactly it. Who's bullying who? I, I mean, these are like uh, people that run food, but they're adults, and you'll just uh, tell them to F off, you know, in a very hearty manner. This is comes with the territory. It's all normal business behaviour and business practice. It's preposterous to say there was bullying. What is somebody going to change their vote as a consequence of being bullied? I mean, what what was the threat? You're not getting your money. I mean, it really is the most ridiculous thing, uh, and it's laughable. There is a theme running through this whole document that the other 41 members, or several of the members of the SPFL, are thick. They didn't know what they were doing. They needed the board to tell them what they were doing. The biggest ridiculous one of all is they didn't know that when leak campaigns are in danger of not finishing, there might be a threat to any of the sponsorships. Everybody knows that. Everybody in every league in Europe knows this, that if uh, the terms of the contract signed pre-virus are not fulfilled you know, there is a negotiation, there is a risk in a negotiation uh, uh, attached to, to that consequence. These are obvious things. It's not something you have to be told about like you're an idiot. You, you know, it really is a very, very poor dossier. And, and it's, that, and, and, it's a damp squib and a huge disappointment to all those journals, BBC Sports Sound, waiting for the, the great... Um, missive, you know, to land on their, their desks. I, th- I think the reason why, I think Tom English has done one tweet since it was released and, and, and he'll probably go away um, and talk about rugby or something like that um, now to try and divert people's attention. Um, but there's no evidence. They seem to have confused their opinion and their gut feel and their... I bet you that's what they're up to. Their conjecture, they seem to have con- confused conjecture with fact. Yes, this is 19 pages of uh, Rangers' opinions. Yeah, and and it's not stuff that needs an EGM to be aired because they've been airing it anyway. And then the other thing that strikes me about it, Anthony, is if 
they don't get their votes for their EGM. How 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 is a reconciliation in the SPFL, Anthony? From this point on, because what they basically said is, we hate everybody who's on the board. We hate all the executives. Uh, well, all the executives is two or three. We hate the executives. We hate everybody that's on the board, and. Everybody else who didn't see you, as, as Davis just said, and everybody else who didn't vote like us is thick as shit. Yeah. Maybe I'm they'll change so. the, the name of their podcast from heart in hand to cap in hand, and they'll come mm. back groveling. And, uh, you know, yeah. except they're, they're, maybe they'll, they'll, they'll show some contrition. I mean, we all know that's not going to happen. Uh, it's an absolute mystery. One thing I love, one of the closing remarks is when, when they try and be self-righteous, and do the you know Scottish football's credibility is at stake here, and it's like nobody gives a shit about Scottish football outside <laughs> Scottish football. Just so you know, Rangers, <laughs> you know they're not sitting around in Pat PSG Barcelona man City going, oh, I hope the SPFL are all right. Mm. Nobody gives a shit. We give yeah. a shit, and that's yeah. that's important to us. So that's okay. Yeah. But nobody outside cares. So we just need to get you know our house in order and do what we can the same way that every league on the planet's doing because everyone's in the same boat so it's yeah it's and actually the the only people who then made the SPFL look stupid are the people who've shared WhatsApp private WhatsApp messages the people who've shared private emails and the chief executive of one club who's divulged confidential information that took uh, confidential board discussions. You're making all the good points, Brian. I mean, that's, there are serious GDPR issues there. Uh, you know, this guy Gardner, who I think is, is the chief executive of Inverness, has made public a whole lot of uh, WhatsApp messages which are, are contained in a transcript in, in, in this uh, dossier. Uh, and uh, you know that's not right, and I, but I don't think anybody's got the stomach or the will to do anything about it. But it's a very pertinent point. Another point that was made earlier there is that look, this is a time of crisis. This is a time. F- I mean, I never thought I would hear myself saying saying this, given all the shenanigans that, uh, that went on in 2012, and including, uh, funnily enough, Neil Doncaster. And, and Rangers, uh, you, you know, re- recreation as, as, as a new club in the fourth tier. But a time of crisis, it's a time for everybody in the SPLs to be singing from the same hymn sheet. It's not a time for starting little fights uh, like, like of the, the type that Rangers have. This is a crisis where clubs can disappear because they have no money and they can't afford to stay in the game. Uh, and we have to all get on with each other and there has to be some sort of communion of of, of minds and Rangers have to get on uh, with the 41 other members whilst there are 41 members Uh, and uh, you know there has to be the burying of hatchets etc etc because we're in a crisis this uh, is just not needed the reconstruction is not needed Uh, it's, it's survival and nobody's immune even Celtic are not immune. Celtic have got the furthest to fall from all of this. They might be the biggest and have the most money, but that money is disappearing every week. So what we all have in common is, is, a, is a, a financial, a serious financial problem to deal with. And uh, we should be getting on with that and coming up with new ideas, not, not pursuing this complete and utter waste of time fight that Rangers, quite frankly, are going to lose. They, they, there you go. They're not going to have the support for this. What are they going to do then? You tell me, because I don't know. Well, when that, they lose the vote, what are they going to do then? That's that's my point. Uh, I mean, basically, because the SPFL board, or the well, first of all, because uh, these seem to be long running. I mean, none, not all of these points are things that have arisen in the last, you know, in the paper, in the dossier, are things that have arisen in the last two or three weeks. So this seems to be a festering sore. So how long has Stuart Robertson been driving along to Hamden, sitting in on SPFL board meetings, shaking everybody's hand, but secretly thinking you're all a bunch of tadgers? <laughs> exactly. 
So, <laughs> how can how can he um, have any relationship with his slaughtered Alawa, Breakin, and Dunfermline? So he's criticised them. He's also been like, you know, it's like somebody's, you know, on behalf of Inverness and Dundee's, he's pretend, he's like, he's acting like their big brother. You know, you've been bullying my wee brother. I mean, yep. how patronising to Inverness and Dundee that Rangers need to come along to their yeah. rescue. This is it. This, it runs the whole theme running through the document is they're actually claiming uh, they're representing the uh, the interests of other clubs when nobody wants them to represent them uh, because they don't recognise what Rangers are saying. Uh, there's an arrogance uh, in it as well. Maybe they still think they're oh, the mighty Rangers. I, I, I don't know. But they represent nobody but themselves. And I think Hart of Midlothian and Stranraer have been conspicuous by their uh, uh, absence uh, in saying anything this afternoon. Yeah, this and a, I do believe proposal. Rangers are in a gang of one. This uh, is a proposal uh, from Rangers, Hearts and Stranraer, allegedly. To call yes, the CGM. Well, so where's well, their where's their input into this dossier? Well, it's actually because I think they needed those votes for it to to go ahead, and it it will go ahead uh, because it's on on the twelfth of May. But it might be a four it should be a foregone conclusion. Um, well, you know, possibly tomorrow, because all you need is uh, three clubs in the Premiership, or uh, with all the other numbers and all the, all the other leagues to to ensure that it's not going to work. But I'll, I'll tell you an interesting thing. There's a, there's a school of thought that should say, you know what, this is a festering sore. These guys are going to keep coming back and uh, and get on with making complaints, uh, you, you know, whilst the game burns. Uh, maybe we should, uh, to mix metaphors, lance the boil, bring it to a head and have a friggin' inquiry just to shut them up so that we can focus attention. I'd give you sort of a, some odds on that happening. I think there's a reasonable prospect of, take that back, there's a prospect then of that, some some clubs taking that view. Let's hit this in the head and let's deal with it and, and, and give them their uh, their inquiry. What do you think, think of that, Anthony? I think what this, this sort of spat dummy shows is that, you know, it's, their mask has slipped. But what I don't think they ever grasped was we all knew they were wearing a mask. <laughs> you know, everyone else in Scotland knew this is what they're like. And then if there was any pretense that they weren't like this, you know, the mask slips we see. Ha ha. They, now they know who we really are. It's like, yeah, we knew. We all knew. This is how you were going to behave when a situation like this arose. And, you know, you, you're in trouble financially. Your company, your your business, we all know. Mm. So this is just the, it's just their excuse to to really lash out. Like I think I've likened it before. You know, in in Lord of the Rings, when Gandalf's getting pulled down by the the Balrog. I don't know if you know this reference, but the, the Balrog's this big sort of fiery demon thing, and you think it's gone. You think it's fallen down into this you know unstoppable cave, whatever. Uh, or bottomless cave, I should say. And, but just before he dies, he lashes out once and he grabs uh, Gandalf and pulls him into the cave, is the point. You know, th- th- there's that nasty spiteness that they won't give up. You know, they will go down swinging. And that's what they're doing. And, and, and I see something you just said there, David, is something I've been wondering today. Might they actually get their inquiry from the perspective of Rangers, Hearts, St Mirren, maybe a couple of others go, yeah, let's have an inquiry because can he stand that Neil Doncaster? He's too smart for his own boot. And then a sufficient number of other clubs have the opposite opinion of, do you know what? As you just said, we need to lance this boy. We need to deal with these people. We actually need to have the inquiry for the inquiry to turn around and say, nothing to see here and then humiliate them. The only thing about that latter, if, if, if you get those two opposite ends of the spectrum uh, coalescing together to um, to get an inquiry. The only problem with that is how much time does that waste to Scottish football having that inquiry? And then for a period of time, they'll be Lord of the Manor going around saying that they won because they got the inquiry. Well, <laughs> they may well do, but I think that is the issue that has been created do you because you have to take the view? Do you think 
if Rangers are humiliated, and humiliated means uh, three Premiership clubs tomorrow or any permutation therein uh, announce that they are not voting in favour of the resolution, so they actually know that the resolution is going to fail even before the, the virtual meeting takes place on the 12th. Is that the end of it? Well, now, if you think if you think it is the end of it, that is the end of it. So they can sort it off, and we can all go on with the business of saving the game. If you don't believe it's the end of it, and they'll come back with something else because they've got form here, you know, like Kay McLennan and and Gary Hughes a few years ago, and, and even before that, who are these people? You know, uh, when uh, the club the club was uh, joined the league in two thousand and twelve, uh, the S- SFL. I think there will be some clubs thinking that way. Just give, let's have an independent inquiry. Nothing to do with whether uh, Neil Doncaster is a, a, a good guy or not. It's just let's lance this boil. Let's get this uh, out the road. Let's appoint, uh, dare I say, <laughs> Lord Nimmo Smith <laughs> to do a whitewash report or a dossier or whatever you call it. Uh, but is that going to be the end of it? You know what's next? It really is the most amazing thing. A t- tremendous waste of time. I mean, what is next? What are they going to complain about next? Well, <laughs> on on the getting the, the the votes for it, Hamilton are not going to vote for it because Les Gray is one of the board members who will be utterly pissed off by by the week Stuart Robertson's behaviour. Mm-hmm. Celtic are not going to vote for it. Mm-hmm. So. You only need one more club. Yeah, no, I, I don't think they'll, they'll they'll get it. But is that the end of it? That's the question. I, you know, you can do the math as the Americans say: Hamilton, Celtic, one another. Hibs, uh, gig, Hibs over, gig over. Ain't happening. Have the meeting if you want, but it's failed before it started. But is that the end of it? You've got to look beyond that. And what does that mean? Do they just go back with a? tail between their legs, go to their core audience and say, eh, look at us, we done our best. You know, everybody's against us, nobody likes us, we don't care. Now give us your money for season tickets. Well, is, that what it's all, to, is that what it's all about? I can't the Rangers radio, they're just going to go and join the English Premier League. <laughs> so, you know, I think they, they've got a plan B, God bless them. You can, you can have a podcast on that, guys, because, you know, you can't do that. Although Rangers associates do own 25% of Workington. Workington Town, I think it is in the English print pyramid, but you know, UFO rules don't permit that. But maybe that's another subject for another day. There may be, there may any, be bank- anything goes though. Anything goes in this environment. You know? I was going to say there may be banking on. You know, to be fair to them, and there could be some rationale to this. The English Championship might collapse. Well, that's and, what I'm and saying. All, and all bets are off thereafter. If if leaks, if whole leaks start collapsing. Look, nobody more than Celtic would love to play in, in, in England. In 1998, UEFA and, 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 and brought in a rule that effect, effectively prohibited trans-border participation because they thought it would create a Pandora's box if you had Ajax playing in the Bundesliga and Celtic playing in England and Porto playing in La Liga. So they brought in this rule uh, that prohibited you know, this cross-border participation taking place uh, taking place unless you were literally on a border, you know, like, like Berwick Rangers. And there's a story about the Welsh teams as well. They all joined the English league uh, before we had motorways. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that, that, that's a, a, another story. But current league rules don't allow it. But I, I, I think this uh, COVID situation is, is going to result in insolvency right, left, and centre. And I think uh, anything goes. And uh, that might that could include a, a change in the transborder participation rules. Who knows? Uh, but uh, if it does, you know, I, I would love Celt- personally. I would love Celtic to be playing in a uh, another jurisdiction, uh, preferably England. Uh, but you know, that's that's uh, we're not we're not there yet. So <laughs> we've just got to stick stick with the SPFL and show some solidarity and see if we can get through this. So, uh, Anthony, getting back to your point of earlier, they're not going to be magnanimous in defeat, if they're, because oh, they, they, were, they were defeated, um, they were part of a 9%, uh, defeated 81% to 9% uh, in the last vote, and they've created this. So, if if there is no... Inc- well, first of all, 
What do you think, Anthony? If there is no inquiry, where do they go next? And if there is an inquiry, where do they go once they've... If the inquiry says, no, do you know what? Things could have been done better, but based on the circumstances of they were trying to quickly resolve a situation before uh, clubs went bust, it could do better, but, you know, nothing, nothing, not the end of the world. Uh, and, and, of course, Rangers would then be dismissed again. So where do they go next? Genuinely. Other, other than moping and, you know, making snide remarks in the media, you know, and their, their uh, deluge of statements, you know, they arrive, you know, every afternoon. I, I don't know what they can do. Uh, you know, other than, you know, appeal to their, their base. You know, it is, it's kind of Trump-esque in America right now. You know, we're in a, we're in a disaster Right, I just need to lean into the worst possible people that are going to buy everything I sell, uh, and, that, and that's what they'll do. And they'll they'll just spin it all. They'll release their new kit. They'll do this. They'll do that. You know, they'll survive possibly to when we start playing again, and and that'll be that. And then you can't imagine Jim Gerrard will be there for long. David, what do you think? <laughs> No, I, I don't. I mean, I think Rangers... I mean, all of Scottish football has got a problem. Celtic have got a problem because none of us have got any revenue coming in to all intents and purposes. So it's a problem we all share. So let's put that in context. But Rangers' situation is on the record, so we're not just bitching about Rangers. The former chairman, Dave King, said in November, as we all know, that they needed another 10 million quid to take them through to October. That's what he said on the 29th of uh, November in his... Chairman's statement at the AGM. So that was 10 million pre virus. Yep. So, uh, and we'll ignore all the other wee spats they're involved in with Jersey companies and Big Mike Ashley. Ignore all that. We now have to lay on top of that requirement uh, the nil revenue uh, scenario uh, and the multi year contracts and the big fat salaries and, uh, for, that all, all, all the top guys get. It's unaffordable. Now, it's just like running your household. If you've got money or you've got access to money, you can last longer than the guy that's got no money. So Celtic have money, but Celtic will lose all their money if this goes on and on and on you know, for a prolonged period of time. Rangers, as a matter of record, don't have any money. So if they have to stay in business, you know, they have to find it from somewhere because it's not there just now. And... That's what their challenge is. And I think it'll be very difficult because, you know, who is going to invest in a football club, any football club just now? Who is going to lend money other than a government guaranteed loan to the extent of 80% to a football club? The answer is nobody. It's a bear market and it's an insolvent market, the football, the professional football market. And nobody in their right mind would really invest in a, a football club just now, unless it was maybe a giveaway. So I, I think it's uh, Rangers have acute problems. And I think that's probably a factor here that's driving this <laughs> insane demands for an inquiry. And it, it might be you know, camouflage. It, it might be uh, if we're going down, you're all coming down with us. I, I, I don't know what the logic is, because I still can't, like, like you, Brian, I still can't find any any logic in any of this so and and that's a point anthony i can't work out whether this is a um one of three options it's a strategy of for when they do go if if it's a strong possibility they're going to go down bust or at least into administration when they go down they've created enough noise that it was this is all being created by the bad guys over there right or that they are trying to, they know they're going down, and this is a scorched death strategy mm. of pulling up, of trying to do as much damage on the way out the door as possible by delaying when money gets paid to other clubs. You know, because the extra, if a, they're due an, an extra million quid or something like that from the SPFL if they finish second, um, that's neither here nor there, and the, you know that that that, that delays them going bust by a week. Mm. But six hundred thousand pounds might actually be the difference between St Johnson staying afloat through this and yeah. not staying afloat. 
So the other thing is a scotched earth strategy of we're pulling everybody else with us because we're definitely going down and, and we don't in a situation where we're actually starting, we have to win four games more than St. Johnson just to be on the same points as them, for example. Or if it's a combination of both those, what are your thoughts, Anthony? I think they they would, you'd have to imagine that, I mean, you just look at their fans online, they would be the kind of guys that would, you know, they'd take you down with them. You know, I, th- I think they would, they'd get, they'd get a great buzz out of that. You know, if, if they are sinking, would they not love to take every other club, you know, the, just out the spite? You know, they're yeah. not, they're yeah. not hum- Sorry. Yeah, yeah, this is an opportunity to hide in the crowd. You know, uh, if you're going down, uh, if other people are going down, you can hide in the crowd. You know, and it, uh, you don't want to go down, you don't want to go bust alone because everybody goes, look at them, they've gone bust again. But if you're going, if you're going bust in a crowd of busted clubs, you know, uh, you, you know the pain and the the, the responsibility is, is spread and it's shared. Hey, that, that that's the the nearest I can find to logic eh, in all of this. But in all of this, you know, all clubs have this problem, uh, including Celtic. We need we need a league to play in. Now, what kind of league are we going to have? You know, if uh, if there's no Rangers, eh, there's no pick a club, any club. <laughs> no Hibs, Hearts, Aberdeen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exa- exactly. You know, smaller clubs. I mean, I was speaking to. But actually, I've actually spoken to two uh, directors of two, two premiership clubs, two of the smaller ones. By a process of, process of elimination, you can probably work out who they are. These guys can spin in a sixpence. They can see this through. But, you know, if the big clubs go bust, you know, what's Celtic left with? You, you know, Celtic and then, what kind of league is it if we're big and everybody else is financially big, I mean, and big, big support and everybody else is... Is is a lot smaller. It's not real competition, you know. It's it's uh, it's a bantamweight fight and a heavyweight. Uh, it's just no good, and it was already bad, quite frankly, before this uh, virus hit. In, you know, Celtic, Celtic are, and it's not a, a boastful thing. It's just a matter of fact thing. We we were so financially strong that we were in a financial league of our own, a financial league of our own, and Rangers were actually nearer to Aberdeen and Hearts than they were to Celtic. Uh, that, that's not, that wasn't healthy then, and I think it's going to be a, even less healthy uh, for whatever emerges from this uh, you know, virus uh, uh, that we're all having to experience. So I'm a bear, and I think it's a horrible backdrop you know, for, for uh, the Scottish game and, uh, and our club Celtic. And, uh, but I think Rangers are, you know, are just if we're going down, we can hide in the crowd because others will be going down as well. Uh, it's a bleak scenario, and administration doesn't solve a lot of problems either. Because okay, you'll get the points deduction, but if other clubs get the points deduction, it all nets out. So why have a points deduction? I think there'll be a debate about that. Do we keep this points deduction if if, our, if clubs are going to go down? But the big one, because the original question was about Steven Gerrard. Can Rangers afford him? No, they can't. But, that, uh, I mean, that's, that's that we, the thing. players that we can't afford either, you know. So, <laughs> let's be fair here. But no, I can't see, say, Steve, I cannot see Steven Gerrard staying at Rangers. There you go. There's your answer, in my opinion. I can't see him staying. Well, particularly if, um, you know, when all of this shakes down, all the players have gone and they are shopping, they're having to shop at just marginal levels above where Aberdeen shop mm. for players. They're looking, they're, their players are on five grand a week and Aberdeen players are on three grand a week mm. level. Yeah. If you're Stevie G, do you want to be hanging about for that? No, you don't. But it's more than that. I don't think they can afford them. Uh, and that's why I think uh, you'll go by mutual agreement. But even if they could afford him, you're suggesting that he wouldn't want to be here if basically he's, they're just uh, marginally above Aberdeen in terms of finance. So either which way the outcome's the same, I, I, I don't think he'll be there. But I don't think a lot of our players will be there either, you know, because of the predicament. So The, the only thing, that I, and I swing backwards and forwards about, about where our players are going to go, 
because it wholly depends on what the rest of Europe's doing as well at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but there's still bigger, wealthier leagues that still have more money. Uh, and No, I, I'm, I'm just wondering whether agents might be saying to players, just stay put for a for, just stay put until this settles down. And, yeah, and we, and we see but, we, we, how but things what are shaping if up. Your club goes bust. So take uh, let's let's not pick in Rangers unless you want to. You know, pick any other club. You know that we'll call it Rangers. Then if you're a player playing for Rangers and you get a three year contract, and you go into administration, and you lose fifteen points or you don't. When you when you come out of administration with a CVA, you've still got to inherit the contract that you had before you were in the administration, and that's your biggest cost. So, so what have you achieved? You might have lost uh, a bit of tax again. You might have lost maybe a, a Hummel liability or an elite liability or a big Mike liability. I don't know the fine details of these contracts, but you're still going to be carrying the big fat players' contracts unless there's a change in the rules. And there was a good article this week in off the, uh, off the, one of the magazines, not off the ball. Uh, some, anyway, this week talking about, you know, the league's voided. He, he, there are some circumstances where you can void a player's contract. Uh, so I, I think these are the real issues. These are the issues affecting Scottish football. Not an, e, an, e, uh, an EGM that took place two months ago Was there anything else Anthony in the, in the dossier that stuck out as you that's um, was... of my of, of the notes I've taken just the just the the constant use of the expression inappropriate conversation you know it's so vague and it goes back to what we were talking earlier about the, the bullying and this and that and you know, these conversations are had. We're dealing with grown-ups. Yeah. You know, who is to say what is and what isn't an appropriate conversation? You know, it's not like me walking in a classroom and hearing some kids talking about some HBO show and saying, come on, you're in school, you know, cut it out. Do you know what I mean? That, that, that was the only thing I'd, I'd scribbled down in my notes that I, I hadn't covered, but, yeah. I mean, the thing that strikes me, that's been irritating me with you and Murray and, and Tom English on uh, online about their, their complete lack of understanding of business and one of the things in this is the SPFL is made up of 42 individual businesses who all have their own criteria, all have their own and, and, and as the clubs become bigger uh, actually probably across all 42 clubs they, they are all having senior people, the, pe- the senior people in that business probably all have their own egos who at the lower league clubs are probably thinking, who are the big clubs to tell us what to do? And at the big clubs probably are thinking, who are the wee clubs? What the, what do, what do they know about anything? Yeah. And, yeah. and that's going to manifest itself in the way that all these people interact with each other. They, 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 their teams compete on the park in a competitive environment. They're probably nice to each other in the boardroom half the time just out of the fact that they've got to be. Mm. And so why wouldn't that then manifest itself in that they have abrasive dialogue when they're speaking to each other, which seemed to be the gist of Rangers' complaint? Yeah. The, the, the Dunfermline and Breakin and Alloa, when Dundee and Inverness were swithering, they phoned them up and said, by the way, see if this doesn't happen. We're all stuffed and the league's going to go bust. So you better get your finger out and vote for this. This is true. And you know what? That kind of conversation is allowed. That's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is part of the gig. This is what you do. You lobby, and you can lobby in an assertive, a uh, strong way. That's what you do. And uh, there's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. And the idea of bullying is preposterous. And in this respect, and it permeates the whole document, Rangers re- are purporting to represent people that don't want to be represented. Rangers represent nobody but themselves. That's the long and short of it. Another constant in this whole thing is, uh, to paraphrase the Godfather, uh, we're, we're all part of the same hypocrisy. All this full concern for the affairs of others. Yeah, I know. It's, it's nonsense. Uh, I, I know for a fact that clubs that voted, the clubs that voted no would have voted yes 
if they weren't in the predicament that they were in. Mm-hmm. But this is ridiculous, you know, uh, for the good of the game. No, nobody believes it, but everybody says it. It's, it's a nonsense. We've got to keep this game up. Not we. We we're, we want to uh, support people that want to keep this the, the, the league alive and the teams in the league alive. And we don't want to be messing about with uh, silly dossiers and silly EGMs uh, at this time. Uh, and I think it's doomed to fail. But there's a school of thought that says, uh, just give them a, just give them an inquiry. The board has it within their wherewithal to uh, have this voted down, but say, you know what, the resolution's failed. But we, the board, <laughs> are, are going to uh, grant you a, uh, an independent uh, uh, review. That'd of, be a power uh, move. Yeah. yeah well, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll give you odds on that as well. Because where's it going to end? They'll come back with something else. We have to lance the boil and move on and de- deal with the serious issues. You can't have this festering away in the background. I actually wondered if that, getting back to your power move, Anthony, <laughs> of that, that, that might actually be the Rangers proposal gets voted down, hmm. the top flight then gets called, Celtic are awarded champions, then the, the 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 league then say, look, to clear up all the murkiness that's been created by one club, we've decided we're going to have an, a full independent inquiry into this at the appropriate time when we're out the other side of the dire financial consequences that face the club. Yeah. And then Rangers have got nowhere to go because the SPFL have told you that this is coming. But it's coming, and the SPFL board, by doing this, they are in a more um, legitimate position to say, and because we are putting the, the good of the game first, because we're going to make sure that everybody survives this. Yeah. We're not farting around and wasting, wasting time at the wrong time to be doing this. So yeah. we will have an inquiry. When there's punters sitting in stadiums, that's the right time to have an inquiry, and that's when we'll do it. Yeah. And that is a smart move. So I think we have just solved the problem there. Do you want? Do you want to call them? You want to call them? <laughs> I'll text Peter just now. <laughs> <coughs> okay. So uh, very quickly, um, uh, how many clubs? If we've got no spectators in the grounds until January, for argument's sake, just to pick uh, a, a point that's in the future, but not forever. Um, David, how many mm. clubs do you think will make it to the first of January? Oh gosh, I have no, no in the top idea. flight. I don't. Well, oof. well, Aberdeen have got a lot of wealthy guys around them. Uh, access to money. This is about money. Cash is king. Yeah, cash is king, and access to cash is queen. If you want to keep the analogy going, Aberdeen have money about them. Hips have money about them. Celtic certainly have money in the bank and access to big money. So Celtic are going to be around. Hearts, I really think, uh, and, and Budge is finding out what it's like at the coal face. You know, the, it's the Eddie Thompson principle. Does she want to uh, piss all her money away on the jam tarts? You know, I'd say that's a tough call. The old hearts. Uh, Can I just tell you, I don't know, I'm Budge, and I could be completely liable in a. But I did speak to somebody else who's connected to a top flight club who said she's one of the dimmest wealthy people she's met that this person's met. She's nice but dim. Yes. <laughs> Tim nice but dim. <laughs> well, no no comment. Don't no, don't know her. Uh, you know, Liv- Livy's and your Hamiltons, they'll be around forever in a day. Uh, I keep saying it's the, it's the lower league clubs because the, the lower league clubs contracts for players all stop on um, the last game of the season. Yeah. And so they've all stopped. Now the, the bottom three leagues have been called. All their contracts have stopped. Yeah, so they, they, most of them will still be around. Your wannabes in the championship um, I, I might have a few problems. I don't know the situation with the American owners and, of uh, the Dundee clubs. Uh, I, I tell you what, Inverness Cali in a dire financial situation. I had a look at their accounts when that, that guy Gardner was mouthing off 
Uh, I think they, they, they've got problems. Your Falkirk, your Dunfermlands, all, all these wannabes uh, uh, that populate the, uh, the the championship could, could have serious problems. Thistle have got access to money. Uh, they, they, they should be all right. A very good uh, chief executive. Uh, you know what? If it's really, really bad, you might end up with a whole lot less teams in the SPFL and a league by invitation. There you go. Uh, rather than merit, because it's who's around. Could you see us, David? I, I wondered if we 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 could do some sort of preference share or rights issue around about October time to get some cash in to to, to pre- ring fence investments that people have already got in the club. Yeah, I mean, all clubs could have uh, a share issue, whether it's ordinary shares or a different cl- a class of shares. Uh, they've got that open to them. Uh, they've got membership schemes, you know, that quite a few clubs are talking about, including Celtic. Uh, I, I, I dare say, but yeah, you could have a share issue. You could, uh, with technology, you know, Hibs used uh, an Edinburgh company to uh, very successfully raise money a few years ago, and I could see other clubs raising money quite easily from fans. Uh, but there'll be clubs that fail, and uh, it's. It's impossible to tell how many clubs will be around, and, and with any degree of accuracy, who will who will uh, will fall by the wayside. But we need big clubs, and, and, and you know, you know, Rangers are a big club, and I'm sorry, uh, no Rangers is a bad thing for uh, Scottish football, uh, in my opinion, despite all the things I say about them. <laughs> I'm shaking my head. <laughs> it's my role here. <laughs> Let them die. <laughs> what's well, what's well, your, yeah. What, where do you mind. see it going, Anthony? Uh, uh, if if we could no spectators to first of January to pick a, a date, or certainly for the rest of 2020. I'm intrigued by the conversation about the idea that clubs fail, but I mean, surely let's let's just say pick one Hibs. Let's say Hibs failed, right? Surely they'd they'd reform as new hips. You know the business would fail, but the club would survive. And what? you get my point. Yeah, but surely well, they didn't they have to go. What do you mean by fail? At the end of the day, I don't think administration. You know, administration receivership used to be called as distinct from a liquidation, which means you're dead. You don't exist anymore. Um, if you football. The biggest financial drain on football clubs is players' contracts. To all intents and purposes, that's really true. Yeah. So administration, receivership, if you like, is not really going to solve the problem that you've got of these big meaty contracts that you might not be able to afford anymore. So I, I think that's an issue and I think that's a problem. I think you know, that's going to be a thing across your world European football, where yes. you know at the players' days of you know two hundred, obviously the, the extreme end of it, there's still going to be you know stupid money, but there's going to be a reality check that you know drip, trickle down effect of of the money reducing. I think. Yeah, but it's and, a, it's across the board. I, I mean, there'll still be a hierarchy. Uh, there'll still be alpha male leagues, they'll, but all the leagues will be worthless. All the transfer fees will be worth less. All the best wages will be worth. It'll feed its way down the food chain. It'll drip its whatever the phrase is way down the food chain. Yeah. Everything in everything in this space will be worth less. And to the point where uh, you get Scot- does Scotland deserve or need more than what sixteen professional clubs? Well, it doesn't. But you know that's controversial to say if you're a fan of some of the smaller clubs uh, but you know well, that's reality it's true. Of the it is rea- it is the reality there are you, you, too many, there are 20 too many clubs in the senior game but you, you know put it this way Edward's not worth what he was worth in the same way that uh, uh, Ronaldo is not worth you know what he was worth uh, so I don't think we we can afford, you know, the, the players on to keep the players on loan. Is there three? Foster, El Yunusi, and who else? Is there a, there's a third one, I think. Uh, Bauer. Bauer, that's it, yeah. Uh, uh, can we afford to keep these players? Can we afford to uh, 
uh, keep the size of squad. Well, we not release a whole lot of players that are out of contract. Because uh, we are the alpha fr- alpha team in, in, in Scotland, yeah, but you know it'll percolate right through the. I mean, the only thing just on that in relation to Fraser Foster, are Southampton going to keep a, a third choice goalkeeper? On yeah, but he's under. Con- if he's, but I tell you what, if he's out of contract at the end of the year, you know we 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 could, we could get him if we want, and he accepts the wages. But if he's got a contract, Fraser Foster, a good example, has a contract at Southampton for another year. He's going to go back to. He's going to leave Celtic, go back to Southampton, and earn that money for another year, uh, unless Southampton, you know, try and sell him or succeed in selling him to somebody else. There's lots and lots of deals to be done, and that is why I think this whole, fuck, I almost swore there, this whole friggin' uh, 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 the Rangers dossier is just. You don't need it. You want to focus on these issues. How are you going to put a squad together? How are you going to get rid of the players you can no longer afford? How are you going to come up with a business plan that ensures your odds and survival are at the best? This is where the collective mind wants to focus. This is where the SF, SPFL and SFA want to focus. Uh, not on this, because it's, it's fatuous nonsense, nonsense that gets you, gets you nowhere. And that, I, want to know, I want to know how Scottish fo- professional Scottish football is going to survive in a nil-revenue environment. There you go. That's and, what I want. And that's been my irritation with this. The SPFL is not perfect. We Celtic fans have criticised Neil Doncaster and the SPFL since 2012. But yeah. my, my point about all of this, getting back to my Titanic analogy, is really the guy in the crow's nest has just shouted iceberg and Rangers are running around complaining about the quality of the of the band or the or the fact that the the, the steak that they got was yeah. was medium rare instead of well done and they want the chef reprimanded um everybody needs to be focusing on trying to steer the ship away from the iceberg and if it's going to hit the iceberg get the man get everybody in the in the lifeboats and as many people in the lifeboats as possible yeah well exactly so uh why are they doing all this and my like, back to basics I think uh, it's a pandering to their core audience. Uh, they'll sell more tickets as a consequence, and more season tickets as a consequence of doing what they're doing. And they may or may not be around to uh, to, to uh, you know play football next season. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know if you agree with this, Anthony. The, the thing that will have bugged them most, there's no bit, the bug that will, that will have bugged the follow followers most, there's no bit in this. There's no section four. The role of Peter Lawwell. <laughs> There's no bit where they can go. <laughs> See, I told you, Peter Lawwell phoned this guy, and, that, and I th- I'm sure that's what they all thought was going to be in the dossier. Yeah, evidence that Peter Lawwell was trying to enforce stuff on play on people. I think Celtic have played a blinder. Yeah, and that means say nothing, do nothing, speak to, speak to nobody, just let it all unfold. What's the the Napoleon line? There's a Napoleon quote, isn't there, about if if your if your enemy's making a mistake, stay silent or something. You know, you just yeah. let them make their mistake. Basically, yeah. yeah. Don't interrupt an enemy while he's making a mistake. I think that's yeah. it. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, well, that's an hour uh, dissecting the dossier of, of Rangers. I, I think Tom English has made a. I don't know about anybody. Think I think Tom English has made a complete ass of himself on this. Do you know what he is? He's the first guy I've ever blocked on Twitter just because he offers nothing to the planet. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> he, he, he isn't la- he's, he's not so annoying. Or, he's not an Alex Ray that you can laugh at him. He's not smarmy but mildly entertaining like Spears. You know, there's, there's a million people on Twitter that get in your nerves, but you, you still see them. Mm-hmm. I'm just I'm just sick of hearing English's voice on Radio Scotland, and I've just blocked him. And I, nah, he doesn't need to exist in my world. Do you know I don't he, need to hear he, him. he jumps on bandwagons. I've noticed this before. He jumps on bandwagons, but very vigorously and loudly. And he doesn't like. I think this might be the right way to go and build towards it. He jumps on stuff, and quickly it's the wrong bandwagon he's jumped on because the evidence then comes to light that it's the complete wrong thing and in, because he's jumped on so vigorously he just keeps doubling down on it 
He doesn't yeah. then do what other journalists might do and try and start to dig a way out of it and find a, well, I was just taking that side, but equally this side. He, may, he just he just keeps digging his hole to, to um, mix metaphors all the time. He just keeps digging his hole once he's in it. But it's just, he's one of these guys that, you know, probably a lifetime of writing about rugby and nobody really noticing. It's the, it's the likes and the dislikes and the retweets and the fact he's part of the conversation is the the oxygen to his flame. You know, he needs it. That's why he is the way he is. He wants people talking about it. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Sports Sound is about the only... BBC Sports Sound is about the only programme I can sort of put up with. It It's it has been, in my opinion, sort of better than the, the, the rest. But I tell you what, I think you know, I've been colossally awful, and Tom English in particular, with this whole... Uh, Rangers EGM issue I don't know why uh, Tom English pinned uh, his mast to this particular flag uh, because he patently hasn't a clue about you know what's really going on here and uh, he just doesn't get it why should he get it These these guys, Tom and the other guys are sports journalists and that's not meant in a con- condescending way why are they actually even talking about any of this yeah but then that, that's uh, that's part of my frustration. Um, you you'll have done this in in, in business. Um, there's an area that you need that you're dealing with, but there's a part of it that you're not familiar with. You pick up the phone to someone who is. You pick up you know you, you pick up the phone to a lawyer, an accountant, or you know you pick up the phone. You say, "Can I just clarify what the situation is on X?" There's there's, there's business correspondence at the BBC. Surely he can pick up the phone and say, "Right." I understand the principle of this. I mean, the bit that really, really riled me was when he really, he conflated loans and advances and sort of laughed off anybody who tried to tell him that a loan and advance were two completely different things. Yeah, well, he can tell the auditors they got it wrong then if he knows so much. No, the whole his whole uh, position in this has been ridiculous. Uh, I mean, I think he's a really good uh, sports journalist, I have to say. But, you know, I don't try... When I'm talking to friends that are in football, you know, I... I I know that they don't take what I think seriously about football and tactics because I've never been a professional footballer or a manager. So, you know, I don't talk about things or I try not to talk about things I don't know about. And I don't see why that mindset should apply, shouldn't apply to sports journalists as well because the BBC's Sports Sounds contribution to this whole farrago has been woeful. Absolutely awful, and uh, I'm not. I don't listen to it anymore. I've not listened to it for three or four weeks since since all that when they since they had that guy Gardner on. Then they had some uh, Northern Ireland politician on. I mean, that's another. I mean, what in God's name was that about? <laughs> oh, I know. Do, 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 do you know? Because I never heard it, and I don't want to hear it. No, I didn't. Oh, I didn't wait. hear it, and then they dropped it off the podcast when they released it as the podcast. They dropped the guy yeah. off, which well, somebody, somebody must have screwed up. Somebody at the BBC said then said to me that's an indication that uh, the main producer has turned around and said, "What in the fuck? <laughs> Whose idea was yeah. that?" Yeah, 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 exactly. Oh. So, uh, we've that's a, a good hour we've we've managed to waste on the the Rangers dossier. Um, mm. uh, that's enough time on them. Can we can we call can we not call it a report? Right, we'll call it a report. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually looking at it. It says, and I'm only being funny by the way. Report for member clubs. It doesn't say dossier. Where did the dossier come from? Oh, I, I, I think I think that's media chat. I'd, I'd already been sent it before you sent me it. And when you sent me it, I read that line about, you know, not to be read by anyone other than. So I just read it out of badness. That was, that was purely my motivation. It was, I don't want to read this, but I'm going to. Well, by about, by was, about one o'clock today, three quarters of the Celtic Twitter sphere <laughs> seemed to have read this report that had not to be read by anybody else. Well, that, that's my final two points then. It's, it's not a dossier, it's a report. That's what it says. And here's another thing. If Rangers, why, why did Rangers send it to 42 clubs? Did you work that one out? <laughs> <laughs> what, did they send it to themselves? No, obviously. <laughs> maybe they sent it to old Rangers as well. Uh, maybe. Oh, good, good answer. Good answer. Rangers in liquidation. 
Well, with that, I will say, Anthony and David Lowe, thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Hope you enjoyed that. It's followed quick on the heels of uh, Season 7 of the Nine Little Chronicles being out. Uh, season 8, uh, we record them at the weekend. Uh, this is a Thursday night, uh, with the bank holiday at the weekend. Uh, so we record them on a Saturday morning and then stick them out, usually on a Tuesday night. This week uh, it was one day late on a Wednesday night and it'll be Season 8, obviously, because that season's for Season 7. Uh, it reminds me of a joke my son told at Halloween. Why does 6 not like 7? Because 7, 8, 9... Anyway, enough of me. This is me, Harry Brady, saying good night, God bless, take care, I hope you're staying safe. Good night. It never really was. She- And